Hello everyone. Today's lecture is going to be the culmination of uh, the series of lectures on the internet and web. Now would be the perfect time to feel very grateful for the existence of the internet, right? Thanks to the internet, I'm able to record these lectures from my home and I'm able to deliver uh, them to your home. Speaking of homes, I hope uh, everyone is staying healthy and happy. Uh, so let me do a quick recap of what material was covered in the last two lectures. So uh, the first lecture on uh, web covered uh, the topic of uh, downloading data from the internet. So how exactly did we download the data from the internet? We used the request modules, uh, module, sorry. Uh, specifically, we used the request.get uh, function to place a get request uh, uh, get method request uh, which will be of the form uh, HTTP request which stands for hypertext transfer protocol and uh, the get uh, method enabled us to download the uh, content of web pages from the internet. So uh, we saw that uh, sometimes uh, you might have simple format like JSON or uh, text file which you can easily manipulate and uh, uh, load the contents into a Python uh, data structure like a dictionary or a list. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned during uh, web 2 lecture, majority of the content in the internet is uh, in HTML form. So as part of uh, the second lecture, we saw how we can create HTML uh, and uh, generate web pages by using that. Uh, both of course like you can do it manually and we also saw how to write uh, Python scripts to generate uh, HTML content. So uh, turns out that uh, generating HTML content is so much more easier than actually parsing uh, the HTML content. So uh, today's lecture is uh, going to be about how to parse HTML content and how to retrieve meaningful data from the content that you're parsing and uh, we are going to be using uh, a package called beautiful soup to perform that particular uh, task so to give you an idea of uh, how complicated uh, it is to download uh, sorry to parse html data from uh, the internet i'm going to actually show you an example uh, which we are going to use uh, for a lengthy demo at the end of uh, the, the second part of this lecture so uh, for an instance, uh, if you go to the Wikipedia page uh, on Wisconsin, you'll just see that there is a huge table here on the right, uh, which has uh, a lot of uh, key uh, uh, keys on the left and a lot of values on the right. Uh, it feels intuitive that uh, this particular uh, uh, format can be easily loaded uh, onto a Python data structure which is of dictionary form whereas like uh, uh, wherein you have uh, the left uh, value to be the key and the right uh, uh, data to be the value. Uh, so uh, but it's not as uh, easy as we would think it is. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are going to be using a package called uh, Beautiful Soap, which is going to uh, serve two purposes. So the first purpose of Beautiful, Beautiful Soap uh, is that uh, uh, it will enable us to search content uh, into a HTML file. So what do I mean by that? We can uh, specifically ask Beautiful Soap to find uh, all the hyperlinks on a HTML page, which uh, are uh, the a tags or uh, all the bold text uh, which will be within the b tag and uh, let's say or like all the table elements uh, which will be within the table tag so it enables uh, tag uh, based search and we are going to use a different term for tag today uh, which uh, i'll introduce to you later it's called element it's just a counterpart of uh, the same term uh, terminology with respect to the browser end of parsing a html file all right so that's the first purpose of beautiful soap uh, it enables us to search uh, through the uh, elements in the html and the second purpose is uh, after you've uh, done the search, once you have uh, a set of results, how do you inspect that result to get information? For instance, how do you get the text within that particular element or uh, uh, how do you get the attributes of that element? For instance, uh, if you have a uh, A uh, tag, uh, then you need to get the href to get the hyperlink represented by that A tag and so on. 
All right. So let's do a quick uh, recap of uh, how uh, we send HTTP requests. Uh, so uh, uh, recall that uh, you have something which is called as the URL, Uniform Resource Locator, which is going to convey uh, three different uh, pieces of information. The first piece is the domain uh, name, which is the name of the remote machine. Uh, and the second optional piece is the port number. Uh, we haven't mentioned the port number in this URL because uh, HTTP has a default port number of 80. And then the third piece is going to be the actual resource file that uh, you're trying to get uh, using the HTTP request, which is going to be resource.html, right? And then we frame the HTTP request with just plain text message and then uh, send it to the remote machine. Uh, so once the remote machine uh, responds with the HTTP response, uh, we'll know that uh, uh, there are uh, some uh, uh, header information present in the response, which includes uh, the status code. Uh, the default status code uh, for everything being okay is 200 okay. Uh, and uh, you might also have uh, what content type is being returned by this particular HTTP response message. In this case, it is going to be text or HTML. All right, uh, and then uh, the third uh, significant thing that we have seen so far is the actual uh, uh, response that we receive as part of the HTTP uh, request uh, messages uh, processing of the remote machine. So the response itself uh, in this particular case is in HTML format, right? So uh, your browser is going to be a special software which knows how to read uh, this HTML content and render it uh, in a human readable manner. Uh, when you load this particular URL, you don't see these uh, HTML tags on your uh, browser view window, right? So the reason for that is uh, browser internally parses this HTML and creates something which is called as document object model, DOM tree in short. And I'm going to introduce to you what exactly a DOM tree is in the next slide. Uh, once it generates the DOM model, uh, it uh, applies the model to parse the HTML content and then uh, it will go ahead and display the content uh, which is uh, uh, there within the HTML in a human readable form. All right, so let's take uh, this particular example into consideration and I'll go through the DOM uh, tree for you. So as you can uh, see, uh, this uh, HTML page has uh, the uh, parent uh, tag for HTML and it also has the body tag because it's a complete web page. Uh, you'll find uh, these two tags uh, to be the outermost tags. So the uh, tree here is going to have, uh, uh, you know, uh, as uh, these individual nodes. So that's a term which uh, people commonly use when it comes to trees. Uh, these individual boxes will be referred to as nodes. And uh, the way that uh, this particular tree is represented is when you have an arrow from one box to another, it means that uh, wherever the arrow is originating, that box is going to be the parent uh, tag or element. So now we are going to uh, refer to tags as uh, elements because uh, that is the browser language uh, for uh, uh, tags. All right, so you have the HTML element which uh, leads to body and within body you have three different tags. So you have like three different arrows from the body for H1A and the second hyperlink uh, A. All right, so the next thing uh, uh, that uh, L, uh, the DOM model contains other uh, than the elements itself is attributes to specific elements and elements are going to be represented in blue and attributes are going to be represented in red for you to be able to differentiate. Uh, of course, when we have a hyperlink, you'll have uh, uh, at the minimum a href attribute. The third thing that uh, the model is going to specify is the actual content of the text. For instance, the H1 tag uh, has the text uh, welcome and uh, similarly the hyperlink, uh, uh, the first hyperlink A tag has the text about, so that's going to be displayed in pink. All right, so uh, other uh, things, uh, uh, sorry, other terminology that I want to introduce is something which is called as the parent and the child. So as I mentioned, the outer tag is going to be considered the parent, which is the case with body, and uh, the inner tag is going to be considered as child. So these are all uh, terminologies which are commonly used uh, whenever 
you deal with the tree so you have uh, the term node which represents a single element and then you have the term link which is the arrow which goes from one node to another and then you have parent and child all right so uh, after uh, the browser generates the DOM tree, it goes ahead and uh, displays uh, the web page and uh, that will be the final format that you actually see. And none of uh, this processing is visible, uh, visible to the end user in general, unless you know how uh, the browser parses and displays the HTML. All right, so uh, let's actually consider this scenario where instead of the browser, we have a Python program which is going to process this uh, whole uh, HTML content. That is what this whole lecture is about, how to write a Python program to do the same uh, or like similar task uh, uh, which uh, a browser in general does. So we want to be able to, uh, you know, send uh, a HTTP request first, which can easily be done using the request module, right? So we can e either uh, uh, have uh, the HTML content. Uh, um, okay, I, I, let me talk about uh, you know fetching the content using HTTP first. So uh, we send in a HTTP GET request using the request module, and then uh, once we get the 200 OK status code, we should be good to go with uh, retrieving the data that is being returned by that particular uh, GET uh, HTTP GET request. So uh, recall that the data can uh, uh, be either uh, JSON or CSV or text file or uh, uh, HTML which is the most common format and then uh, once you have the HTML the next task that we want to focus on is how do we generate uh, this uh, uh, DOM mo a model which is similar to the DOM model uh, that is being generated by the web browser right so uh, that uh, particular task is going to be done by the beautiful soap module so let me actually introduce you to the beautiful soap module quickly here so it is not uh, installed uh, pre-installed module so you'll have to do a pip install of beautiful soap 4 and the way that you're going to import uh, beautiful soap is uh, by saying from bs4 import beautiful soap uh, all right quick uh, recap of what beautiful soap does it enables two functionalities the first first is a search uh, uh, of all the elements and the second is like retrieving uh, content from whatever is being returned from the search uh, searched element all right so uh, let's see how we can actually create uh, an instance of uh, beautiful soup so beautiful soup is going to be a new data type so you can actually create object instance of beautiful soup similar to whatever uh, you have done so far so once you go ahead and do the import you'll be able to just uh, instantiate a beautiful soap document object uh, by uh, calling the beautiful soap uh, function uh, for creating a constructor function for creating the beautiful soap type and this particular constructor constructor function takes two different parameters so let me talk about the second parameter first so the second parameter talks about uh, what particular uh, uh, content uh, this particular beautiful soap object is going to parse for the purpose of cs220 uh, course always we'll be using html.parser as the second uh, uh, argument to this uh, construct to uh, the beautiful soap so uh, you don't have to worry about other uh, types that beautiful soap is able to parse and uh, okay let me talk about the first argument the first argument is going to be the html content and uh, uh, I'm going to tell you three different ways of uh, getting uh, HTML content in general. So the first way is uh, the simplest way, which is like you have like hard-coded HTML content uh, as uh, a string in your Python script. Uh, whereas uh, the second way is going to sorry the second way is going to be uh, through uh, sending a http get request and we can use the request module to send that particular request recall that uh, uh, that returns a response object and uh, uh, you will be able to retrieve html content uh, by saying r.text when uh, r is the response object 
All right. And the third particular option is when uh, you have a HTML file on your local laptop, you can just use the uh, file manipulation functions like open to uh, open the HTML file and you can use uh, f.read to actually read the contents uh, uh, into your uh, Python program, right? And then you'll have uh, the data that you want to pass as an argument to beautiful Zoom. All right. So let's take a look at uh, an example uh, based of this hard-coded HTML. So there are going to be three things that you need to focus on, the actual HTML code uh, inside this HTML uh, variable. And the box on the bottom right shows the display which you can typically see on a web browser. And uh, on the left is the actual uh, DOM tree that will be generated uh, either by a web browser or by Beautiful Soap. All right, so let's see how exactly, uh, actually uh, this uh, specific example is being generated by Beautiful Soap because uh, uh, you have the node called doc and uh, doc is being generated by Beautiful Soap. But you'll find a similar model uh, generated by using a web browser as well. All right, so uh, as you can see the uh, uh, parent node to this whole tree is uh, something which is called as doc and then within the doc you have uh, the bold tag and uh, the unordered list which is ul for short so unordered list is going to generate the bullet point list uh, so uh, it's actually a uh, little bit difficult to read the html in this given format right so i'm going to tell you how you can make it prettier uh, in just a minute before that, let me actually go through the tree. So you have uh, one bold uh, uh, entity uh, first, and then you have an unordered list with three list items uh, within which the second list item has uh, bold uh, text, right? I'm not sure if you can uh, see this. Y is also in bold, uh, uh, as well as like items is on bold. So uh, the actual text content is displayed uh, using pink shaded nodes. All right, so uh, since I mentioned that uh, this particular HTML string is not uh, that pretty, you can use the prettify function, which is part of uh, Beautiful Soap module, uh, which uh, generates a more, uh, um, you know, a little bit prettier version of the HTML. All right. So uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is uh, how do you perform the search using Beautiful Soap module. So for example, uh, let's say that we are interested in finding all the uh, li uh, elements within uh, uh, this particular uh, UL, UL uh, element. So one good thing for us is that uh, there is only one uh, uh, list, uh, unordered list in this whole uh, HTML content. So you can just use uh, this function called uh, find underscore all and then to that function you can pass one parameter which is going to be uh, just uh, the list element that you're trying to look up for. So uh, this function actually enables you to pass more than one parameter. I'll cover that as part of the demo uh, at the uh, last part of this lecture. All right, for now, let's assume that uh, we are only searching for uh, li. So you can just call the find all function, which uh, returns a list of uh, three elements. The boxes on the top shows uh, what will be the contents of the list, uh, those three items. And uh, if you try to print uh, length of uh, all the elements returned uh, by this find all function, you'll get uh, three because there are three elements. All right, so uh, the next uh, function call that I want to introduce to you is how exactly do you extract uh, meaningful information once you get the search result, which is the second purpose of the beautiful soap module, right? So uh, you can uh, invoke a function called get underscore text. So uh, recall that your elements are going to contain uh, uh, a list of all the elements that uh, uh, beautiful soap found uh, by performing the find all search once you have a list you can just iterate over a list using a for loop uh, so for loop uh, for iterating over uh, a list is very simple you can say for uh, item in list uh, variable name and then do something with that item so uh, what we are going to do with that item is we are going to call the get underscore text function which prints the text content within those uh, elements all right uh, so uh, 
let me actually give you another example so uh, you can also invoke the bind uh, sorry not bind find all function using the b tag which is now going to return uh, two totally different unrelated uh, elements so as you can see uh, the first uh, b element is in a different level of the tree uh, whereas the next b element is within uh, the unordered list uh, beautiful soup doesn't really care it will still return a list of two elements which are highlighted using the red boxes on the top and then uh, the length of elements is going to be two elements all right so uh, the next function that i'm going to introduce with respect to the search purpose is the find function so find all uh, enables you to find all possible uh, uh, results of uh, a particular element search whereas find enables you to uh, find the first matching uh, occurrence of any particular search for instance if you find uh, uh, li element that's going to return the very first uh, uh, you know uh, li tag that beautiful soap is able to find all right so uh, let me actually uh, talk about assertion here quickly so since we are able to uh, perform a search there is always a chance that uh, uh, the return value uh, that is being returned by the search could be none so it's always a good practice to assert whether uh, uh, the return value is none uh, before you go ahead and actually use it all right uh, so uh, the last thing that i want to talk about with respect to search is uh, i told you that you can use the find and find all functions uh, on the document uh, uh, object which is being returned uh, by beautiful soup so other than that you can also uh, apply find and find all on the objects that are being returned by uh, the find and find all function so let me give you an example for instance uh, let's say you're uh, trying to find uh, uh, or like uh, actually uh, trying to find uh, the ul tag which will return exactly one uh, element so find returns exactly one element whereas find all returns a list of elements so uh, since i know that this is going to be one element i can apply the find uh, all or find function on this element so uh, so that you can do more searching so within uh, the ul tag i can once again find all the bold tags which is going to be a list of just like one uh, tag over here all right uh, instead of uh, you know having these function calls in two different lines of course you could go ahead and combine that into a single line so the first function call will get applied and uh, uh, this will get replaced with uh, whatever uh, beautiful soup element is being returned and then on that element you can uh, of course invoke the next find all function call all right uh, so let me move on to focusing on the second purpose of uh, the beautiful soap module which is like once you uh, find uh, uh, a set of elements that you're interested in uh, a list of elements or let's say individual elements depending on find or find all function how do you actually retrieve the content uh, from uh, the uh, beautiful soap element object so there are uh, few different things for us to focus on so um, uh, let me actually tell you get started uh, uh, from what we see on the browser uh, so as you can see uh, this is an example hyperlink from the browser and uh, below is the corresponding html so you have uh, a hyperlink within which you have some part of the text which is a little like and some part which is in blue bold right so uh, and then some regular part which is the click here so the please is in italic and the click is outside all tags and the here is within uh, uh, the bold tag so uh, let's actually look at how we can retrieve uh, uh, the data from these tags so the first thing that you'll do is here uh, this particular code snippet assumes that uh, you have already generated the beautiful soap uh, object for this uh, html uh, string and uh, that the variable uh, for that object is doc so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to find uh, the element a so that's going to return uh, the details of the link and a uh, few things that you can do is uh, you can look at the children of uh, any uh, node that is being uh, any element which is which forms one node of your tree so since we know that find is going to return exactly one element you can do link uh, dot children 
notice that uh, children is not actually a function call it's uh, just a uh, attribute of uh, you know the uh, beautiful soup object link so that's going to just uh, return to you a list of all the children of this particular uh, parent tag a the next thing that you can do is uh, call the get text function of uh, which I showed you example couple of slides ago. So you can just say link dot uh, get text and this is a function call unlike uh, children which is an attribute. So uh, the get text function uh, whenever you are invoking that on uh, uh, any particular beautiful soap uh, object that's going to actually return the text without any of the children uh, tag information. So what do I mean by that? So if you just say link.getText, all that you're going to get is uh, the information which says please click here in the string format. So you sort of like lose these uh, children tags while doing this, right? So you need to be careful as to when you're applying the getText function and how it returns the result. Alright, so the last thing that I want to talk about is uh, the attributes. Uh, so you can use uh, link.attributes uh, to retrieve the attributes of this particular uh, uh, beautiful soup element uh, tag attributes element or tag attributes. In this case, this is a anchor tag. Uh, so the attribute is going to be href, which uh, tells you which uh, hyperlink that you're talking about. So once again, just like children, attributes is also an attribute of your uh, uh, beautiful soap object. Hopefully that's not confusing. I'm talking about the object attribute and the, uh, the attribute here itself is uh, attributes of that particular element uh, or the tag in your HTML. All right, uh, so uh, let me move on to the demo. So this demo is going to be uh, long and uh, a little bit complicated. So I've, uh, uh, you know, uh, made it into three different uh, stages. So let me quickly talk about what we are going to uh, do uh, and uh, uh, with respect to scraping this Wikipedia page. So let me go to the browser over here. So this is the page that we are going to be working on. So uh, this is the page which uh, gives you the list of all the uh, states within uh, US. And as you can see, there is this huge table down here which uh, uh, gives you a lot of data about uh, individual states. If you scroll way down, you'll find Wisconsin to be the penultimate state. So what I'm interested in is if I click click on uh, the Wisconsin link, as you can see, it takes us to this individual uh, Wisconsin state page. And uh, as I mentioned uh, during the beginning of lecture, uh, I'm interested in retrieving the content uh, from this table into a dictionary form into my Python script. And then once you get uh, all of these dictionaries for individual states, you can imagine generating uh, a data frame uh, with all that information and doing interesting manipulations with it. All right, so uh, before I actually go ahead and uh, get started with the demo, uh, there is uh, one thing which I want you to uh, be aware of whenever it comes to uh, parsing HTML content from the internet, specifically from a particular website. So uh, often websites have this file called robots.txt, which is going to give you details about how you can actually do some uh, uh, crawling. Crawling is called uh, the technical term for uh, you know poking around uh, uh, HTML content in the web. So it uh, gives you uh, details about what is considered as uh, a proper way of crawling uh, and instead of uh, uh, using the improper way which uh, will make the website admins think that you are uh, uh, you know hacking their website. Uh, you need to actually pay attention to what they say is okay and what they say is not okay by going through this uh, robots.txt file. All right, uh, I'm actually going to show you uh, examples of what are considered okay, but uh, feel free to go through this robots.txt file uh, if that interests you. All right, so um, 
let me talk, quickly talk about the three stages. So the first stage is going to actually uh, deal with this particular uh, US states page. And uh, what we are uh, interested in doing is uh, going through this huge table and finding uh, the links uh, for each of uh, the states here uh, uh, on the left. All right, so uh, let me show you one more thing on the browser before I switch uh, to Jupyter Notebook. So on the browser, uh, on the Chrome browser specifically, if you uh, right click on uh, any of uh, the elements uh, in your uh, um, you know, HTML uh, display over here, you'll find that there is uh, a tool called Inspect. So if you click on the inspect tool, as you can see, that will take you uh, to uh, some of these uh, Chrome uh, based uh, tools. So it will give you a lot of information about the HTML. For instance, uh, this particular uh, uh, row is within uh, a table. As you can see here, this table contains that particular uh, row for Alabama. And uh, you'll find a lot of uh, HTML tags over here, some of which I covered, some of which I didn't. For instance, uh, I believe that uh, we have seen the TR tag and the TD tag, whereas there are other things like uh, T body and uh, TH, which stands for uh, T header, which we haven't covered as part of uh, this lecture. You can just like poke around and try to find the uh, uh, meaning for each of those tags all right so let me go ahead and uh, close this uh, inspect tool so i'm going to move to jupyter notebook now so what we are going to do is uh, let me first uh, uh, do a bunch of imports over here which i know that i'm going to be using so i'm going to import the request module and i'm also going to import uh, the beautiful uh, soup module beautiful so, and I'm also going to import the OS module because we're dealing with the uh, files over here. So uh, keep in mind that the request module is uh, for downloading uh, the HTML content using HTTP um, get request. All right, and the beautiful uh, soup module is for uh, uh, parsing the HTML uh, HTML content and uh, uh, searching through the HTML. All right. Let me go ahead and do the import. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to be able to uh, retrieve uh, the table, this huge table from this particular URL. So this is going to be stage one of this demo where uh, I am extracting all uh, state URLs from uh, the uh, from the US uh, states page from the states page. All right, so the URL is going to be uh, to the states page, and let me go ahead and uh, uh, generate uh, the request using the request dot uh, get uh, function call, and uh, let me actually go ahead and raise for status uh, right away. Recall the raise for status uh, checks for two hundred. Okay. All right, so seems good. Uh, we seem to be receiving uh, the response. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is I want to be able to generate uh, the beautiful soup object from this particular page. So let me go ahead and uh, call beautiful soup and recall that uh, your second argument is always going to be html.parser and then uh, the first argument is going to be the actual uh, HTML content. So how can we get the actual HTML content? So we can just say r.txt. So let me actually go ahead and display r.txt before I generate uh, this information. As you can see, this is this uh, huge uh, um, text that is being retrieved uh, in the HTML format uh, from that file. And uh, you can also do things like check uh, the type of type of r dot text over here. Let me go ahead and display both. All right. So as you can see, oh, let me let me actually com use this in a separate cell so that you can see what I'm doing here. All right. So 
All right. So as you can see, uh, the HTML uh, is uh, of the string type because we haven't actually done any form of conversion, right? So that doesn't really impact us because uh, the beautiful SOAP module uh, uh, is meant to take uh, HTML in the form of uh, a string. So the first argument is going to be the HTML uh, string and the second argument is going to be just HTML dot parcel and this is going to return a beautiful SOAP object. Let me go ahead and capture that in dog so the first uh, uh, parameter is uh, argument uh, can easily be given as r dot text over here right all right so uh, let me go ahead and uh, uh, show you how to call uh, the pratify function so let me uh, invoke Pratify on the doc, doc object being returned uh, by beautiful so so uh, one thing you'll notice is that uh, uh, it prints uh, the content in a decent way uh, so this is going to look exactly how uh, the uh, python print uh, uh, does uh, uh, format the data so pretty much actually you can use both python print or the pratify function on the uh, beautiful soup object all right so uh, what uh, are we looking for uh, in this um, data so all right uh, as i mentioned earlier stage one is going to be about retrieving the content of this particular table so let me go ahead and actually uh, do a search uh, for uh, table element so let me yeah uh, so from here is stage one so all the cells that uh, are going to be below are also on stage one so uh, let me go ahead and uh, uh, find uh, all the tables in that particular uh, you know document object uh, doc doc object uh, which was written by beautiful so and I'm going to store this in a list called uh, tables. So let me go ahead and first uh, print uh, the length of uh, tables over here. So as you can see, there is only one table that is good. Um, only one table on the stage. page. All right. Um, another thing that you can also see is you can try to print uh, the type of uh, the tables object as you can see it says something uh, that it's a bs4 uh, element which stands for beautiful soup uh, element all that you need to know is uh, it's a beautiful uh, soup uh, element object type all right so uh, now that we have the table we can just retrieve uh, the table of interest by saying uh, table of zero right before i go ahead and do that uh, let me uh, show you why uh, we need to uh, add assertions at all points uh, uh, in this code so uh, this is just a html page right the person who is managing this page might decide uh, in the future uh, uh, to say convert uh, this uh, particular thing into table if the that is the case then our code will would actually uh, fail right because uh, uh, that will be the first table that gets returned instead of uh, this so it's always good to add a bunch of assert statements so for instance i can just uh, assert that lengths of uh, tables is one over here uh, before i actually go ahead and uh, retrieve that particular table so let me call that particular table as tb1 uh, let me go ahead and run this code so as you can see then the assert uh, uh, went through fine because uh, there is only one table this is just a futuristic uh, uh, assert to make sure uh, the html uh, format hasn't changed changed on the website for the states page that's too long right let me actually move this uh, above the search statement all right so uh, as you can see uh, uh, we have the table let me go ahead and uh, um, 
search within that table. So what am I going to search within that table? So recall that uh, the table tag is going to be the parent element and within the table tag you have uh, a bunch of table rows. So I'm going to search on table one uh, all uh, uh, the particular uh, TR uh, elements so which stands for table rows and that will return to me another list right so let me go ahead and first uh, print uh, the length of the list to see how many elements are there ha huh, interesting 52 so i thought we only had uh, 50 states right so let's go and check what's the reason for that so as you can see uh, there are two header lines in this table right and then followed by uh, 50 lines for the whole states so uh, you know the header uh, lines are those two additional lines so you might think of uh, adding an assertion here saying that uh, your length of your table should at least uh, length of TR should be at least uh, 50 to make sure that uh, all the 50 states are accounted for. Again, uh, these are all like for the uh, for ensuring that uh, if the web page changes, uh, our code uh, doesn't break terribly. All right. Now that uh, we have uh, all the TR entries, uh, we want to be able to step through each of them to retrieve uh, the information from uh, this first cell uh, over here, uh, which is going to contain uh, the anchor uh, element. So let me go ahead and write a for loop uh, to step over each of those uh, TR entries. So for TR and TRs, I want to retrieve this first cell information, which I know uh, is given by uh, the TH element. Uh, so I'm going to say tr dot uh, find of uh, the th element and I'm going to save that into a variable called th. So uh, within that uh, th uh, element you'll see that uh, there are uh, uh, anchor tags. So I know that there are uh, tr entries where there are multiple such anchor tags. So I'm going to go ahead and find all of them and I'm going to save that information into a variable called links and I'm going to do a find all of uh, all the A tags. I'll tell you why exactly I'm doing a find all uh, shortly. So if you peek into what is there uh, in links, you'll see that uh, we have all the information that we need. So let me go ahead and print the uh, length of each of those uh, links, uh, which is going to be a list. So one thing you'll notice is uh, the length uh, uh, for the first two entries is weird that's because uh, you have uh, these header lines in this table uh, whereas the other uh, entries are typically one uh, which are for each of those states but there are states where uh, you have two links so let's go ahead and print uh, such uh, weird states to see what are those links so I'm going to say if length of uh, links is uh, greater than one uh, print me uh, not uh, length of links, the actual uh, link uh, details. So as you can see, uh, there are uh, weird states like Kentucky, let me, let me look up Kentucky, which have uh, just a link to the Kentucky page itself and also this additional weird uh, citation link. So we are interested uh, in the first link always. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, save the first link into a variable called uh, links and I want to be able to uh, retrieve uh, the first entry which is given by links of zero, right? So uh, since we are accessing links of zero, we want to make sure uh, that the links uh, list has at least one entry. So if the uh, length of links is uh, exactly zero, I'm going to go ahead and uh, skip that particular uh, uh, link, uh, skip that particular uh, TR entry. So let me go ahead and print what is there in links of zero. Uh, there we go. Here is the link which we want. We need two in information uh, from this particular anchor tag, right? So the first one is the actual text, which is going to be in the name of the state. And the next one is going to be the href attribute, which is given by uh, href. So uh, why do we need both of those? Uh, if you take into example this uh, Georgia state, you'll notice that uh, the URL uh, uh, h URL given in href is actually different uh, from the actual uh, 
state name which is given in the text so recall that you can retrieve uh, text of uh, any element uh, by saying uh, uh, link uh, dot uh, get underscore text function call and I'm going to save that uh, result into a variable name called state because that's the name of the state and uh, also recall that you can retrieve attributes by saying link dot attrs uh, let's actually print and see what is there in link.attrs. Uh, uh, you'll observe that uh, link.attrs is actually a dictionary. So let me leave that as a comment uh, as a dictionary. So you want to be able to retrieve uh, this specific key from the dictionary. So let me go ahead and say link.attrs of uh, href and let's see what's in there. There we go. So uh, here are the URLs that we are interested in retrieving. One thing you'll notice is this uh, URL is actually relative, similar to uh, having like absolute or relative paths uh, for files. Uh, the URLs can also have uh, relative paths. So what do I mean by that? Uh, this is a whole URL which contains a domain name, whereas uh, this is a relative URL which only talks about which resource uh, we are talking about. So let me save uh, the and uh, base URL as a prefix. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this additional content. So what we want to be able to generate the state URL is a combination of both of these, right? So state URL is going to be uh, prefix uh, plus whatever is being uh, uh, retrieved from this href uh, detail h href attribute so let me go ahead and print uh, state underscore url uh, if you go and click one of these links you'll notice that it's actually working great uh, we want to be able to save this information into a dictionary right so let me call it state underscore uh, links dictionary uh, the key for this dictionary is uh, the state name and the value is going to be uh, link to each uh, link to state page all right so uh, what we want to do is we want to save this information in state underscore uh, links and uh, we want to save the URL as the value and the key as the state name itself right let me go ahead and print what is being stored in this particular dictionary. There we go. Uh, all right, so if you try to check the length of the dictionary, one thing that uh, you'll notice is that uh, uh, there are actually 51 entries. That's because uh, there is this weird uh, entry which uh, talks about uh, a postal abbreviation for each of those states. Let's handle that in the next stage. So this is it for stage one. We have retrieved all the uh, URL uh, details from each of those uh, state entries in that big table. So stage two is going to be downloading all uh, uh, the HTML pages uh, for uh, each state. So now that we have all the information uh, in this dictionary, I want to be able to iterate over each key of the dictionary. So I'm going to say for state in, uh, sorry, no, not postal ab uh, abbreviation, for state in state underscore links dot uh, keys. Re recall that keys function call will get you all the keys in a dictionary. Uh, I want to check uh, whether uh, the key is postal observation ab abbreviation and if so I just want to skip that uh, particular key all right so for all other keys we want to be able to retrieve uh, the state URL right so let me go ahead and uh, retrieve uh, state URL by saying state underscore links of state and uh, for starters uh, let's just test it by uh, printing uh, we have the right keys. So we want to be able to send a HTTP request for uh, each of uh, those keys. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, so um, not each of those keys, each of those values, my apologies. So we'll be using the request module and uh, request.get of that state URL will get us uh, the response that we need. Let me sto store it as R. 
I am going to write away race uh, for uh, status and I am going to print what is uh, being displayed in r.txt. So as you can see we are able to retrieve the HTML uh, content from those URLs. So what do we do next to download the, the data into files in our laptop? I want to be able to save uh, the details into uh, a, a file for each of those states. So I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong window. Uh, le let me actually move to terminal here uh, quickly, uh, where I want to show you how to uh, generate uh, um, those HTML uh, files into a folder. So I had an old copy lying, so I went ahead and deleted it. Be very careful whenever you're running the remove command. I'm going to create a new directory called HTML files for states. I'm, I'm going to actually download each of those files into that directory just to not make my original directory messy. So I'm going to call the, this as HTML underscore DIR. Uh, I want to be able to uh, open a file for uh, each of the state and then I want to go ahead and uh, uh, dump r.txt into it, right? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, call the open function. Uh, so this is to save uh, uh, to a file. So what do I want to open? I want to be able to open uh, the file name uh, that you get by concatenating HTML, HTML underscore DIR with this uh, uh, state name, right? So let me go ahead and uh, generate that particular file name up here. Uh, generate uh, HTML uh, file name. Um, so what do we need for that? I want to be able to use the os.path.join uh, to join uh, this uh, folder name with uh, the state name and then I want to add uh, the suffix .html for uh, uh, that, right? So let me go ahead and save this as state underscore uh, file. So I want to open state uh, file and write mode and uh, uh, I'm going to add the closing tag right away and I want to dump uh, r.txt uh, into that file, right? So uh, one thing that uh, you'll notice is if you run this uh, cell, it's going to take uh, a while for you to actually download uh, all of that content. So I'm going to go ahead and let it run and I'm going to talk about uh, stage three quickly to set the stage. Uh, Oops, I still had uh, the print. I'm going to go ahead and uh, interrupt the kernel. Instead of uh, printing r dot uh, text, and I'm going to print, uh, let's say, the state file that we are downloading. Let me go ahead and uh, run this again. As you can see, it's taking a while. So I'm going to go to the Wisconsin state page, and I'm going to quickly talk about what we are going to uh, you know, retrieve from each of those pages in stage three. So you'll notice that there is a table uh, in each of those state pages. What we want to be able to do is we want to be able to retrieve this information which is in the form of key value pair. And we want to write that information into a dictionary in uh, the Python world. Uh, let me go ahead and show you what you'll see if you inspect uh, this entry. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that uh, each of those is a TRs. Within the TR, you have both a TH and a TD element. So we want to be able to retrieve uh, such entries as part of stage three. All right, uh, switching back uh, to my notebook, uh, all the files are downloaded. Uh, as you can see, it took quite a while. For some reason, let's say you want to run the cell one more time, such a waste of time uh, downloading all the files over and over again, right? So instead, you can just add this check whether uh, uh, the file already exists or not by doing os.path.exists uh, of state file. If it exists, then you can just like uh, skip that particular uh, entry. Uh, one final thing that I want to do in stage two is I want to be able to create uh, another dictionary called state underscore files. Uh, this dictionary uh, has uh, a key of state name and the value is going to be state file that we just downloaded. Uh, so let me go ahead and uh, add that uh, before uh, I hit continue. So I want my key to buy, be my state and the value to be the actual file uh, that we generated. All right, there we have it. So we are going to move on to stage three. Uh, 
uh, one thing that I realized is uh, it's probably going to take uh, a few extra minutes to complete stage three. Uh, it, this lecture is going to be longer than 50 minutes, unfortunately, because this is a long uh, demo. All right, so stage three is going to be extract uh, uh, details from each state page. So I'm going to write a function for doing uh, this task. And I'm going to call that function as state underscore uh, stats. So this function is going to take uh, as argument, uh, uh, as a parameter, uh, the path to each of those uh, state files. So we can call this function using a for loop later on. For now, uh, let me just uh, print the path and I'm going to invoke this function, uh, uh, test it using, uh, let me see, the Wisconsin uh, uh, Wisconsin state before that uh, let me actually go ahead and print uh, what is there in uh, state underscore uh, um, files so that you can there we have it so that you can see um, uh, what what we have there all right we have the state name and then we have the file name as the value state name as the key file name as the value so I can just like uh, go ahead and retrieve uh, information uh, from the Wisconsin file by saying state underscore uh, files of Wisconsin Wisconsin I have a spelling mistake all right so let me invoke the state underscore stat function which doesn't do much for now all right there we have it so now that uh, we have access to the particular state file we want to be able to open it right so I'm going to go ahead and uh, open uh, what is there in path and I'm going to close it uh, right away before doing any manipulation so this time we want to be able to read the data right and I'm going to save that uh, into a variable called uh, HTML string and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, create, uh, um, you know, uh, a beautiful soup object uh, with uh, this particular uh, HTML content and recall that the first argument is the HTML string, second argument is always going to be HTML uh, dot parser and I'm going to save that into an object variable called doc. Uh, so recall that I want to retrieve all the table row entries and then within the table row entry, we want to uh, retrieve all the entries, which is going to be a combination of table header and table data. So uh, let me first loop over, uh, sorry, let me first retrieve uh, all the table rows. I'm going to say doc dot uh, find all of uh, tr. Uh, and uh, for each table row in TRs, we want to be able to retrieve uh, both uh, table header and uh, table data. The way that you can do that is find and find all function can accept uh, a list also as uh, an argument. So instead of saying uh, tr dot uh, find underscore all of th, I can say tr dot find underscore uh, all of list which contains both th and uh, td. This is how you can retrieve a combination of tags. I'm going to call this variable as cells. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, peek into what is there in cells. Um, for Oh, I typed in the word uh, each by mistake. All right, so there we have it. So we have uh, all the THTD combination entries. So how do you actually, from cells, how do you retrieve TH and uh, TD is by saying cells of uh, zero uh, and cells of uh, one. So that's going to get you the, oops, yeah. Uh, I wanted to get to this before I run into this error. Good that I got this error. It's saying the list uh, index is out of range. So that's because I didn't actually check whether uh, the length of uh, cells is uh, exactly equal to two before retrieving this. So only if it is exactly two, we want to be able to retrieve such information, right? We want uh, all the information which is in the key value uh, format. So as you can see, now we are able to retrieve uh, table uh, header information and table uh, data information. So if we want to just get the text out of it, we can just say, uh, uh, call the get underscore uh, text function. So I'm going to conveniently uh, save uh, 
this uh, into variables called uh, key and value. So the first one is going to be key and the next one is going to be value. And this is all the data that we need uh, to parse uh, from the uh, state page. So I'm going to go ahead and save this uh, into a dictionary called uh, stats. So stats of uh, key is going to be value. And I'm going to go ahead and return stats uh, from this uh, function. So let me uh, retrieve uh, the stats uh, for the Wisconsin state. And you can do interesting things like uh, uh, look up what is the state uh, beverage. Uh, so if you were thinking that would be beer, that is actually not correct. Let me show you what is the beverage uh, for Wisconsin state. Uh, there we go. It is actually milk. So this is uh, the state Wisconsin uh, state uh, drink. So you can do other interesting uh, things like retrieve, uh, let's say, what is the uh, Wisconsin state uh, dance, for instance. So you can poke through the data to find uh, uh, more uh, interesting keys uh, uh, and let me actually show you what is that in lens and uh, see how you can uh, retrieve that information. As you can see, the Wisconsin state dance is actually polka. I have no idea how to do the polka dance. Uh, there we go. So um, we only retrieve this information for the Wisconsin state, right? What if we want to get all the state information and put it into a data frame? That's something which is going to be quite simple because uh, you have a uh, dictionary of uh, all the state files. So you can just iterate over uh, each state in that uh, dictionary, uh, retrieve all the keys and uh, make this function call uh, into um, uh, as part of your loop body. So instead of saying states of Wisconsin, you want to be able to say states underscore uh, file of state. And you can just, uh, uh, you know, store all this information by sta saying states underscore stats, uh, interesting variable name, that's going to be a list. So it's going to contain uh, uh, each of those dictionaries. So uh, let me append uh, stats into states underscore uh, stats so that we can actually generate a data frame with this information. All right. Um, what do we have here? Uh, okay. I used the wrong. Uh, Oh, I use the same variable name. Okay, so let me actually uh, call this uh, states uh, um, sta states details instead of saying state stats. Typical, uh, you know, mistake of using the same variable name uh, for a function call versus a variable name. Uh, let me go ahead and replace that. There we go. We, oh, I replaced that uh, original data. So there we go. Uh, now that we have a list of uh, all the state details, I can go ahead and import pandas. I'm going to actually go ahead and scroll uh, way up to the top and uh, import pandas as uh, pd. Uh, you can generate a data frame uh, with this information by saying uh, pd dot uh, data frame and you want to be able to store that uh, into a data frame. Let me call it states underscore df. And I'm going to quickly just display states underscore df. Oh, oh, I need to run the cell again, sorry. So quickly scrolling down, uh, if I rerun this uh, cell, uh, as you'll see, you'll have a lot of interesting information and I leave you to play around with this uh, additional details of the pandas data frame.